This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon. We told you we would be back on with the breaking news here in New York City. The NYPD about to brief on this arrest just moments ago. Frank James now in custody after that mass shooting on a New York City subway here. The image is just coming in of that arrest a short time ago. Uh, sources telling ABC News he was found in the East Village of New York at tents uh, more than 24 hours here in New York. But they say they have their man now. He is in custody. And let's listen in to New York City Police Headquarters. Moment of this incident, and we have important information to transmit today. First, uh, we'd like to go to the mayor, live from Gracie Mansion. And now, Police Commissioner of the City of New York, Keyshawn Sewell. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. I am truly fortunate to stand here among these extraordinary investigators and federal partners to make this announcement. Moments ago, Frank Robert James was stopped on the street and arrested by members of the New York City Police Department. Officers, in response to a Crime Stoppers tip, stopped Mr. James at 1.42 p.m. at the corner of St. Mark's Place and First Avenue in Manhattan. He was taken into custody without incident and has been transported to an NYPD facility. He will be charged with committing yesterday's appalling crime in Brooklyn. I want to commend all of the investigators and analysts who took part in this all-hands-on-deck investigation. Literally, Hundreds of NYPD detectives worked doggedly during the last 30 hours to bring this together. They did so in tandem with a vast number of our law enforcement partners, including those from the FBI-NYPD Joint Terrorism Task Force, the ATF-NYPD Gr Crime Gun Intelligence Center, and the Regional Task Force led by the United States Marshal Service. We hope this arrest brings some solace to the victims and the people of the city of New York. We used every resource at our disposal to gather and process significant evidence that directly links Mr. James to the shooting. We were able to shrink his world quickly. There was nowhere left for him to run. I'd like to turn it over to Chief James Essick for details of the investigation. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to update the public on yesterday's incident on the subway in Brooklyn on a Manhattan-bound end train. Through the course of this investigation, we developed additional information and evidence. Mr. Frank James, our person of interest, now became a wanted individual for yesterday's horrific incident. Mr. James is a male 62 years old. He is known to us and has ties in Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York City. His arrest history in New York is nine prior arrests, dating from 1992 to 1998. Those include possession of burglary tools four times, criminal sex act, 
theft of service two times. He was arrested on a New Jersey warrant. He also has a criminal tampering. He has three arrests in New Jersey, 1991, 1992, and 2007. They are for trespass, larceny, and disorderly conduct. So yesterday, we recovered video of him prior to the incident entering the Kings Highway subway station. He has the same black cart that he has later recovered on the crime scene. The pictures are to my right over here. This state is available electronically um, after this. This station is three blocks from where he recovered the U-Haul truck that he rented in Philadelphia. The key to that truck was recovered at the crime scene. This jacket, the distinctive orange jacket, was also recovered, as well as his construction helmet he was wearing, and we, we recovered that in a garbage uh, bin in transit. We believe, but this is still early in the investigation, that after firing his weapon 33 times at innocent New York City subway riders, Mr. James boarded an R train that had pulled into the station, went one stop up and exited at 25th Street Station. We also have a picture of that. The gun used in this, a 9 millimeter Glock, which was recovered at this crime scene, was bought, was purchased by Mr. James in 2011 in Ohio. We tracked Mr. James and his last known whereabouts was 7th Avenue and 9th Street in Park Slope, entering the subway. Minutes ago, thankfully, NYPD patrol officers from the 9th Precinct responded to St. Mark's and 1st Avenue where they apprehended him without incident. This case was quickly solved using technology, video canvassing, and then getting that information out to the public. So I can't speak highly enough of the partners we had, the FBI, Mike Driscoll, ATF, John DeVito, U.S. Uh, District Attorney from Eastern, uh, Brian Peace, uh, and, and the coordination and, uh, uh, within the Detective Bureau, Tommy Galati from Intel, our Transit Bureau, our Patrol Services Bureau. A uh, phenomenal job less than 30 hours later to arrest this individual. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Brianne Peace. Good afternoon. Thank you. Yesterday was a dark day for all of us but the bright spots of the incredible heroism of our fellow New Yorkers helping each other in a time of crisis, the quick response by our first responders, and the hard work by all of our law enforcement partners that has been ongoing is truly uh, a bright spot here. Today, uh, Frank James has been charged by complaint in Brooklyn Federal Court with one count of violating 18 U.S.C. sections 1992 a7 and B1, which prohibits terrorist and other violent attacks against mass transportation systems. He has been apprehended. He will be arraigned in federal court in Brooklyn, and if convicted, he will face a sentence of up to life imprisonment. My office is prepared to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that on April 12, 2022, in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, in the Eastern District of New York, Frank James did knowingly and without lawful authority and permission commit an act, including the use of a dangerous weapon with the intent to cause death and serious bodily injury to passengers and MTA employees on the New York City subway system. The government will prove, among other things, that James traveled across state line in order to commit the offense and transported materials across a state line in aid of the commission of the offense. We in the Eastern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office are working closely with all of our law enforcement partners, the FBI, NYPD, ATF, U.S. Marshal Service, and others, including the Kings County District Attorney's Office. And my office and our law enforcement partners will use every tool at our disposal uh, to bring this individual justice and bring justice to New Yorkers and restore safety 
and peace of mind to all and we'll continue to do so as this case proceeds. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. As Mr. Peace just discussed, Mr. James is now facing a federal charge for his actions, a terrorist attack on mass transit. We have two ways that you can get in contact with us, because I want to be very clear that this is still an ongoing investigation. If you have additional information regarding Mr. James's activity, or if you have digital information, please reach out to us. Contact the FBI, 1-800-CALL-FBI, or you can provide digital media through fbi.gov slash Brooklyn shooting. We need to hear from you so we can fully understand all the events that have occurred over the last 30 hours. It's crucial that we receive the assistance of the public as we piece this case together. There has been some reports that FBI holdings to date um, had a tie to Mr. James. I want to be very clear that to date we have found no record of an investigation of Frank R. James by an FBI office before the shooting yesterday. Reports that FBI's New Mexico field office previously investigated him are inaccurate. I want to thank our partners in this case, the NYPD, the ATF, the U.S. Marshals, and the U.S. Attorney's Office and all the members of the FBI NYPD Joint Terrorism Task Force. We've had such a tremendous response from all of our partners in this case that have led us to this moment now. I also want to take a quick moment to highlight the work of the JTTF. I'm fortunate I get to work with them every day. It's truly an outstanding group of people led by SAC Kerry Farley, who's, who spearheaded this investigation. They've done an outstanding job on this, as they have every time New York has faced a threat of this nature. So thank you, and I'd like to turn it over to John DeVito from the ETF. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is John DeVito. I'm special agent in charge for ATF here in New York State. Uh, one of the key points that uh, ADIC uh, Driscoll pointed out was that we could not have done this without the public's help. First, let me say our thoughts and prayers and actions for the past two days have been with the victims as well as all New Yorkers. The men and women of ATF have been working side by side with NYPD, FDNY, the Marshals, FBI to solve this heinous crime, which we have. Immediately after the attack, New York City Crime Gun Intelligence Center, or CJIC, which is a unit of, comprised of highly skilled analysts, investigators from ATF, NYPD, as well as a myriad of other vital partners, whose sole purpose is to collect, analyze, and disseminate actionable intelligence regarding gun violence just imagine a team of dedicated professionals exploiting every nugget of intel from gun violence, the firearms, and then weaponizing that information to use it against the people that are terrorizing our communities. That's your CJ. The timeline on this gun's life spans 16 years in five states. And I'm very proud to say that late yesterday evening, about 12 hours after this attack, ATF agents were able to close the loop on that extensive time span and determined that Frank James purchased said firearm from a federal firearms licensee in Ohio in 2011. So essentially we tied that gun utilizing the shooting to our target and now we have our target in custody. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.